Hello all. Good evening. So how are we doing today? Good. Great. Okay. This has been on our mind for some time, and uh, so we have had feedback from various uh, sections of the ecosystem that we need to have a hardware meetup, a hardware only meetup as such. And uh, I have friends here as speakers. Abhik has uh, known us for quite some time now. Ishwar and Sudeep, I have known for quite some time now. And they have been pushing me to, you know, conduct a hardware meetup here. So here we are, first hardware meetup. My name is Abhik. I own and run Robots Alive. Okay, it is a robotics and automation company. And uh, today's talk would be uh, mainly about, uh, you know, the experiences of uh, building a hardware company. So starting off, okay, we started in 2009. Okay, it's, uh, it's been almost five years and uh, the company had a quite a unique trajectory. We were, we were going up, down, going up, down, okay, uh, sometimes stabilizing, sometimes very excited to see a new business coming in but didn't really click. Um, so lots of different experiences but the, the good thing is that we, in this five years, we have got to, we really have got to know our industry very, very closely and that is something which I feel is very, very important for a hardware startup. So our first lesson was that, you know, typically simple solutions work. This is a paradigm, this is a phrase which we hear very, very often in the startup world. Okay, release early, release often. If you're not embarrassed by your first product release, you have released it too late. Okay, all, all these kinds of things. This principle will not work for hardware startups. Okay, it is not as easy as uploading a piece of code and therefore expecting the results to be, ex I mean, magically appearing back onto the customer site. There, is a, there are aspects of delivery, there are aspects of uh, testing, there are aspects of transportation, there are so many other aspects I'll discuss later. The cost of release is too high, okay? But that does not mean that you wait for the perfect product to happen. You test your product in terms of functionality, make it simple. So rule number one is make it simple. Rule number two is release once you feel those functionalities are working properly and they are reliable enough, but then you release it. But do not release in a in an environment where you where you feel that oh my customer is going to be embarrassed so that means I'm releasing at the right time no you're not hardware companies will not flourish like that okay another thing which we <coughs> keep hearing is price your product very very wisely in your initial days one of the thing and this is specifically for B2B business is get uh, the customer who's also an end user because then what happens what he really requires what the customer really wants for his business is something which you will be able to understand very closely. You'll be able to draft off a very clear cut scope of work and be able to follow that particular scope of work. And lastly, I feel that hardware is actually a load of fun, okay? Because I sincerely believe that one of the biggest advantages of a hardware company is that both hardware systems or whatever products we, we build and we, we live in the same physical world, okay? So the impact of a hardware product which is working is far more fascinating than any other software or simulation work. Yeah, so thank you so much. So I'm from Mukunda Foods Private Limited. In fact, we covered most of the challenges faced by uh, hardware companies, so I'll be speaking about something else today. Cost of Indian food is growing higher and higher. In fact, I, like 10 years back, I saw this ad that Abhi eat the McD burger at 20 rupees. Now it's just 25 rupees. But previously I was getting a dosa at uh, Adigas, I'd say 20, now the masala dosa costs around 40 rupees. It's almost double. Indian foods are still prepared, they're not manufactured. So the solution to this was to bring in automation to Indian food. When you bring in automation, food, automation into the process, you make it lean and you make the food production much easier and it is much more affordable. More than this, uh, I'll give you a small case study. These are all uh, true values, by the way. In McDonald's, they serve 3,000 meals a day with only 40 employees. Domino's has 30 employees and they serve 550 people a day. A basic Indian restaurant with 30 employees, they, sell, they serve only 250 meals. So if you do the numbering, one employee in an Indian outlet serves only 25 people, whereas in a Western outlet, it's 100 people, the same, the same person. That's the place where your cost dynamics come into place. So to address all these things, no, uh, we need to bring automation wherein the food is made automatically. You don't need a person standing the whole day behind your tawa to make a dosa or to make anything. People like customization in food and that's how we addressed with dosamatic. 
it took about two and a half years for us to reach a place wherein you know you could give the machine and people eat the dosas. In fact, uh, in couple of your story events, we gave dosas to people to find out the taste, and you know, it was one of the platforms which we leveraged so that the taste of the dosa can be improved today. So research and development happened. We have the patent of this product, and uh, we are glad you know that. Uh, today, people all over the world call and say that this is the machine I have been looking for so long. Send me one. Cost is secondary and you know, packaging, insurance, everything, they are ready to pay today. And that's the reason why today we are shipping machines the whole, the whole world over. Hello, my name is Varun. Like, I'm the founder of Technity. We are into like affordable 3D printing. Like today, I wanted to come to this Your Story meetup, hardware meetup, organized. It was pretty good, you know, like coming, getting into Dosamatic and robots alive, getting the insights about the industry. I'm Nihal Kashinath and I run the IoT Bangalore uh, open community for people interested in the Internet of Things. Uh, I think this particular session by Yosuri was much needed in uh, Bangalore, in, you know, generally in India, because we need people to focus on hardware, on building hardware, on assembling hardware, and on selling hardware.